Let me turn off this light real quick. The stock door cards looked like this. And now they look like this. So there's actually black leather on the insert. There's all Alcantara. And the stitching color I decided to go with was this nice uh, bright silver stitch here. Because I think that kind of contrasts well with the car. I didn't want to do black again because that just kind of blends in too much. And especially when you're doing all the stitching work, you may as well have some contrast stitching. And I also didn't want to go too loud with the color. Like I was debating about going with yellow. But I feel like there just isn't enough yellow elements on this car. It's kind of monochromatic. So I decided to err on the side of caution. And I think silver is a very good neutral uh, choice for sure. And you can see I kind of carry that over with the center gauge pod, or not gauge pod, unless you count these as gauges, but um, the center AC vent console. So that's done in Alcantara as well. There's a lot more to show you. So obviously the rest of the interior is not back together. Um, I am going to hopefully work on that today, starting with the dash. And speaking of the dash, I've decided to upgrade to this nice full digital color display dash right here. It was made by a company called um, Gar, 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 G A R W. However you pronounce that, it's made by a company in the UK. This dash also comes with like built in functionalities specific to the Lotus, like for example, the mobilizer light is over here on the side, the seatbelt light, all that stuff is all built in as if this was like an OEM dash. And uh, again, it's full color, it looks super sick. I already test fitted this as well. The reason why it's outside the car is because I had to actually get it kind of modified because originally it had the socket head screws here and here and here and here. So when you mounted the L bracket, which looks like this, to it, uh, this section right here conflicted with these bolts here. So it actually sat on top of the L, or not the L, the uh, socket head. So there was a gap between the bracket and the back of the dash. So I actually had these countersunk and machined to have this nice flush uh, counter countersunk uh, metric screw installed instead. By the way, here's a quick comparo of the stock dash and the new one. All right, L bracket mounted to the new dash. All right, the dash is back in the car. Uh, I am still waiting for the gauge cluster to arrive in the mail. Hopefully it should be here anytime soon. It's still in the FedEx truck. So I have a carbon fiber uh, gauge shroud thing that's gonna go in on top of it. I think what I can do now is actually take off this film. This is always the best part. Yup. And another thing I wanna show you guys is my new mirror lenses. So these are some nice blue tinted aspherical lenses. You can see how there's that little line right there. It's convex on the outside and I think it's flat on the inside, but gives you a lot wider of a uh, field of view because a stock one, you can't see diddly shit out of it. So I'm not even sure if that's a word, but you know, basically you can't see anything. And to match, check out the sick uh, rear view mirror I just installed as well. Straight from Nippon, it is carbon fiber as well. Hold on, let me go to this side. Maybe you can see it from here. There you go. So it's all 12 weave carbon fiber to match all of the carbon fiber accents on the car. Check it out. And of course, the wing. This is a Benetech dry carbon wing, super sick. I love this thing. Straight from Japan. Some Japanese guy hand made this for me, I think. Um, and by the way, see this corner right here? You have no idea how many times I slammed my head into this thing while working on the car. And just going back to the center mirror, you can see that it is definitely a lot smaller than the stock one. There's pretty much no point in these exegius to even have a rear rear mirror because if you look at the back, you can't see anything. I mean, right now you can see a lot more because the intercooler is not there. But once I have that installed, you literally cannot see anything at the back. But this is just for looks. So while I'm waiting for the FedEx truck to take its sweet time to arrive with my carbon fiber goodies, it's all good because I have some other carbon fiber things I can work on. Like for example, boom, look at this thing. God damn, my new Tillet B5 carbon fiber seats with Alcantara, or sorry, Dynamica inserts, which is basically the same thing. So what I am doing now is obviously I have a seat laid out on the garage floor. I'm stating the obvious uh, and I'm going to install the seat rails onto it. These are the stock rails. I did sell my stock Exige seats. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. So while I was working on this carbon fiber seat, 
FedEx ended up showing up and my package has arrived. This is from Greg's Racing Parts. I actually ordered the stuff from him uh, back in November. These are all my carbon fiber interior bits. And of course they all had to be made to order so that's why it took some time. So let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what all the stuff looks like. All right, everything's unboxed. Let's check it out. Matte carbon fiber dash panel, uh, AC climate control, surround trim panel, rear binnacle pocket, and of course, glossy carbon fiber door sills. You can see how these have opposing weaves. Everything's 12 weave, of course, to match. So while I was mapping out the plan to redo my entire interior, I had to be very strategic in terms of which panels I wanted to be done in Alcantara and which ones I wanted to be done in carbon fiber. So these are the ones I picked and I think these should hopefully uh, really bring things to the next level while also not being overbearing. I mean, again, the car definitely does have a lot of carbon fiber on it already, uh, but hopefully it's dispersed enough to where it's not just carbon fiber galore. Uh, and again, another big no-no in my opinion for carbon fiber stuff is when you mix and match the weaves. Everything I have here is 12 weave carbon fiber, all 3K. So you can see from my lip up front, that thing is also 3K uh, carbon fiber. And the same thing for my radiator shroud, that is also 12 weave. The wing is 12 weave. The rubber diffuser is 12 weave, etc. So let's take a closer look at this dash pod. This thing looks sweet for sure. And the reason why I specifically chose to go with carbon fiber for this uh, gauge cluster hood slash dash pod thing is because of course it sits on top of the dash and I didn't want like a glossy reflective surface there. And another extra step I took for the door sills is actually, uh, I bought everything from Greg's Racing Parts. So shout out to him, great customer service. Not sponsored, he just makes great parts for Lotuses. Um, and then I actually had him help me uh, before he shipped everything to me put a PPF layer on top of these door sills because they have so much traffic from ingressing and egressing out the car, uh, they can get very easily scratched up. So they actually have a layer of Expel Ultimate Plus already applied. So now I can just basically throw them in and not have to worry about you know, taking it to a shop afterwards and uh, applying that myself. So that's a huge bonus and a convenience. But yeah, everything looks great. But now the question is, although they look good, do they fit well? So. And I'm gonna go work on installing this now and see. And here's a quick comparo of the Jank stock plastic door sill versus the new carbon fiber door sills. Vast improvement. Holy shit, there's a burn in the fucking garage right now. Holy shit. Where'd it go? Oh. Okay, I think the bird's still, uh, uh, dude. Just fly under the door. Okay, there you go. Just crouch under and leave. Go. Okay, finally, dumbass. I'm actually pretty damn impressed myself. I just finished installing this carbon fiber gauge cluster hood and the thing snapped in just like OEM basically. Check out the fitment over here on the side. It lines up perfectly. So you can see how I basically transferred on the spring clamps from the stock cluster hood onto this one and pushed it in and that was pretty much it. All right, just finished installing this carbon fiber trim panel that goes around the climate control knobs. Looks sick. It was just a friction fit. So what that means is I just basically uh, pushed it in and it's pretty secure now. It's not going anywhere. And also, of course, I transferred on the knobs and all that stuff to it. So good fit. You can see from just picking good materials inside your car, you really elevate the uh, sophistication and just like high quality feel in it. So Alcantara here, aluminum everywhere else in terms of the chassis, carbon fiber, more aluminum. It all blends very nicely. Coming over here, I'm working on the new carbon fiber binnacle that goes in between the seats on the back panel. So this is the new one. I actually got a brand new uh, cigarette lighter adapter thing here because the stock one, which is this one, it's all plastic and flimsy. This uh, receptacle is actually not even the correct size for the US plugs. Lotus maybe forgot to switch it over, but that's just how they are on these cars. So I bought a new one. It's a tiny bit bigger, so I had to dremel out this hole in the carbon fiber, but it wasn't a big deal. And now this one is all ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss this in. So here's a look at the binnacle installed. Another nice detail to the interior. You won't even really notice it once the seats are in. But yeah, this interior is starting to piece together just as I envisioned. Loving it. 
Yo, 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 I'm back in the garage. It's actually Sunday the next day, so I'm gonna finish up this stuff down here and hopefully piece this interior back together. Uh, before I start though, however, I need to get some food in my stomach. And unfortunately, when there's not that much food around you and you're also on a time crunch, luxuries, they kind of go out the window. So for today's menu, it's gonna consist of Sonics. I'm definitely not looking forward to it that much because I usually try to stay uh, healthy in terms of my diet. I'm always really picky about the ingredients that I eat. So I'm just gonna get this cheeseburger down my stomach and then uh, get to work. Sometimes I wonder if it's better to just not eat than eat things that you don't wanna eat. Who knows? And just like the slum dog that I am, my garage's workbench is the dining table of choice. I think I went a little bit overkill with these door sills because I definitely burned way too much time getting these set up. So you can see from the stock plastic ones, they have this uh, like diamond pattern bracing structure underneath it. So basically when you push on it, uh, it doesn't flex. And of course the new carbon fiber ones do not have that. So I had to find some uh, appropriately sized foam. So now it should be a lot more sturdy. I also added some Velcro here on the sides. And then also for this side, I added this neoprene weather stripping as well. Okay, door sills are done. Let's check out the interior. So both door sills are now installed, left and right. And I also installed the left and right uh, vent pods or whatever you call these things. And of course, aside from just the door panels, I also, of course, had these uh, rewraps and upholstered in Alcantara. You can see that there's some custom stitching done as well. In the spirit of the Cup Exige cars, they also have a very similar style of stitching. And I think they came out awesome. Now installing the door sills themselves, uh, not too bad, aside from me just going overboard with all the foam and all that stuff. So the fact that everything lines up like basically like factory is a testament to the quality of these parts. And I'm very impressed, super stoked about it. I mean, check out the weave, even matches direction from here with my side skirts. But really the only difficult part about the installation for the door sills was this area right here where it makes that connection to this panel, the trim panel up here. Uh, that's because the carbon fiber piece now is a lot stiffer in this region. So you really have to kind of maneuver it into this pocket area, but it did go in, everything bolted down nicely. So there we go. Okay, so I have most of the interior back together now and I just plugged in the battery temporarily, which by the way is back in here in this tiny little trunk. There's the battery. So everything's all plugged in right now. Let's go ahead and check out what this dash looks like. If I open the door. So basically every time you open the door, it'll start pre-booting and show you this voltage meter of your battery. So that way, when you actually turn the key on, the dash will be primed and ready to go much faster. So now let's go ahead and key this thing on. And there it is. So what you see here is basically one of the screens that comes with the dash. And the dash itself also has its own self-contained Wi-Fi network and also a mobile app, which I've connected to both of them on my iPhone here. So now if I just toggle to the right, we can basically flip through to the next screen. And this is the one that I'm most likely gonna be using uh, most of the time. Let's keep going to the right. There's another one. And another one, some diagnostic screen. And back to the original one. So I'm still trying to figure out how to configure the dash. I think there's some more settings that's uh, unlockable through this phone, but pretty sick. And then also you can see on the right-hand side that there are these um, red LED bulbs. So if I take off my e-brake, you can see that just goes away and then back on. I'm really stoked on the progress so far. I mean, I think the whole vision I had in my head uh, at the beginning of the year is now finally coming into reality and it's awesome to see. I'm mean, the reason why it's taking me so long to install everything and why I'm still here and it's like what, 6, 7 p.m. on Sunday is because I spent so much time just taking pauses. Like I literally just stand here and stare for like 15 minutes before I get back to work. Again, you have the passenger side door sill, which also matches the carbon fiber weave direction on this side as well, sick. And also for the pocket right here, I went back to the, uh, this is a actual, I can't really see cause it's kind of dark, but this thing right here is a Senso soft painted material from the 2008 plus uh, Lotus cars. So the previous uh, 07 ones, like the one I had, let me dig it up real quick from this pile of junk. It looks like this. 
it's just like a bare black plastic with a textured material. Because I don't wanna go carbon fiber overload, I want a couple things to still uh, match, I guess, and be a little bit toned down. So I'm purposely going with plastic here. I'm gonna go with the OA Plus uh, Plastic Sensosoft Passenger Side Airbag Cover. And by the way, I deleted the airbag as well when I had the dash off. <laughs> Make the mic fly. Resurrection. Resurrection.